Are we live? We're hello, live. hello, 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 hello. <laughs> Is it on? <laughs> Is it on? <laughs> we are on. We are live from uh, somewhere in Wisconsin, and we are driving to Madison, and we are very excited. Uh, our show is a little delayed because we are running late, but we are coming to you from... Where is we coming from, Joss? Does it say Nida? Um, we are coming from New Lisbon, Wisconsin. Oops. Oh. And <laughs> it's... Yeah, so we're... We figured we'd do a little pre-show entertainment for you. I'm going to be focusing on driving, but mostly I'm going to be introducing here. It's going to be Joss Barton and Toby Hillmeyer. We're going to do something I'm not sure which... Uh, our friend Relic is going to be operating Hi. the camera. She's our uh, camera operator, cinematographer, and I'm going to let them take the show. Fancy. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to turn this around. So what are we talking about today, y'all? Well, we've been telling a lot of great stories. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we've been talking about queer fam. Queer fam. We've been talking about uh, the, the joys of... Um, Trans motherhood. <laughs> <laughs> the joys of trans motherhood. Talk about that. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been talking about some of uh, the writing that we've been doing and, and what we got different things that we're working on. Um, so so I wanted to, to say a little something about uh, a story I'm working on right now. Uh, and, and it's not really at the point of being ready to share. Everything's just coming together. But I'm really excited about it, and I'll tell you why. A couple months ago, I read a trashy, tropey, straight romance novel. Oh, um, yes. And it was pretty good. It was pretty good. <laughs> uh, and I realized that there's, there's a lot of these tropes in there that, like, okay, they're heterosexist. There's some... some you know, patriarchy going on, but there's there's something about these tropes that, like, there's a reason why they persist, and there's there's a kernel in there of something that is really powerful and, and meaningful. And so, in this book I read, there was this uh, really possessive, jealous guy who, who sometimes acted inappropriately, but not wildly inappropriately, and they made sure to have it clear that what was going on was that, like, you know, he just, he cared so much. Like, you know, he he was just so, um, so overwhelmed by his feelings that he didn't know how to handle it. And, and, you know, those are the excuses that we hear all the time. And, and you definitely do not want to be perpetuating those kinds of narratives. Say that uh, we lost con- Oh, we're back live. Okay, never how, mind. How long did we lose connection? About a minute. I Should I start <laughs> over? <laughs> uh, I just want to interrupt you. Also, no one's watching. Okay. I think it's still actually recording. Okay, it's still actually recording. So don't start over. Just keep going. Just keep going. Okay. Keep going. All right. So, um, so then, um, a little distracted there. Maybe okay. Go, go back like. Yeah, so so there's something really powerful about having someone just, like, care about you so much, where you are so important that they will, like, put their life on their line, that, that they'll, like, you know, maybe act out in inappropriate ways, but, like, that, that, like, it's all based on the fact that you are so valuable to them, and I think... That, that you want to be careful about how to split that apart to not include all of these negative messages, but especially the trans community needs to hear that more often. Needs to hear that you are so valuable, that you are so important, yes. that like, yes. that, that, you know, there are people out there who will be willing to fight for you, be willing to die for you, and, and like, um, you know, like fight off all the werewolves and whatever is going on in the story. Um, <laughs> and and so I I I loved that little piece of it, and I thought to myself, I bet I can do this. I bet I can, bet I can write a story that includes that kind of thing, while also making sure that anytime there is anything inappropriate, the overall narrative of the story like gives pushback against it. So like maybe there's gonna be a cis partner who like really wants to protect their trans partner and says, hey, don't do that dangerous thing um, because I'm trying to protect you. And then there's some pushback and saying, hey, you don't 
get to say that, but, like, thanks for protecting me anyway, and making it all come together, but having, like, I just, I love that, that bottom line kernel of what is, what seems so powerful in that romance trope being, like, that, that super protectiveness, that super caring, that, like, just overwhelmed, I can't even handle all my emotions because you're so incredible, and you're so important and special, are we still and... Ta- are we still talking about yeah. tropes or actual trans-on-trans relationships? Because <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like some trans-lesbian relationships I know. Yeah, this sounds like some... Which I think, I love what you're saying because, yeah, like, those, like, super cliché like rom-com and like uh soap opera like l word level as soap opera like tropes like actually happen all the time in trans relationships (laughs) all the time betrayal jealousy you know desire Mm -hmm. you know heartbreak uh like it's all is like a lot of like trans on trans relationship which makes trans on trans so fun but because there's, there's just drama is always high stakes, <laughs> and also very can be really cheesy at times. So I love that. Yeah. So so I'm working on a a, a sci-fi romance story. Yeah. And uh, and and it'll be set in some kind of a a, a, a world that's like either post economic collapse or first door or for some other reason has a, a lot of scarcity and creates opportunity where there's a need to like actually fight like actually protect the people you care for in a very like immediate visceral way i think sometimes the ways we talk about like protecting our loved ones in in today's world can can sometimes feel a little abstract like it's definitely real and it definitely is protecting people but it's not the same thing as fighting off all the werewolves right interesting i like that (laughs) What about what about you? What kind of oh. fun things are you working on? I'm trying to finish uh, my manuscript. Um, I'm working on a manuscript. Uh, it's a collection of poems, some prose pieces, a couple short stories. Um, it's titled An Ozark Rainbow. It's, uh, it's a collection. Oh, yes. It's kind of like yes. my way of uh, examining like memory, yes, yes. Um, nostalgia, surrealism, fantasy, lots of sex. <laughs> but it's like it's it's fiction um but a lot of it is kind of pulled from my life growing up in rural uh missouri which is like kind of where the mozarts begin um and also um kind of my life as a young trans woman in st louis uh, which i've been experiencing for the last uh fabulous uh eight years so um so it's kind of taking a lot of those experiences um, of being like young and trans um, and just kind of creating something I, I hope people will like out of it. <laughs> so that's what, I, that's what I'm working on currently uh, at the moment. So Toby, I, this is like what Josh just said, it's making me think of like some things you and I have talked about, about being uh-huh. like elders in the trans community at this point. Yeah. And I was wondering if we could, like, maybe speak to that a tiny bit. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll actually say what what I was just telling you a, a couple days ago in the hotel. Yeah. Um, so one of the things I've definitely realized is I, I get this sense that a lot of, a, a, a big chunk of trans community and, and, like, actually where you meet people kind of community um, tends to be people who've, who've been out for like under four years right. um and especially like there's there's all of these these like spaces where that is a huge part of what's going on there's other spaces we, we connect with each other and have other places to to like have have community for for our more trans elders but i think like i had this visceral moment actually when uh there was this there was this thing that happened i guess it was back in 2007 where a really transphobic film hit the queer film festival circuit it ended up being the first and still only film to be accepted and then rejected by the san francisco frame line film festival mm. and uh 
And it was a huge controversy because it was hitting up all of these queer film festivals and, and their excuse was like, oh, it was made by a lesbian. So that's why it's in all these, these queer film festivals. But, you know, like, you, you wouldn't say like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't buy that excuse if it was a horribly homophobic film. Right. Um, and, and, and so, like, it got protested, and it was huge, like, you couldn't get on to trans Facebook without seeing it all the time. What was, what was, do we, do we want to say the name of the film? Because I don't know what you're, I don't the, know what you're the talking film, about. The film was called The Gender Cater. Yeah. And it was, like, a combination of, of indicator yeah. and gender cater, uh, gender and indicator, and it was, um, <laughs> The, the basic idea was it was about a, a, a cis butch dyke from the 70s who took so many drugs that she fell asleep for 30 years and woke up in 2000 where she was in a world where evangelicals and trans people actually, they use the T word, um, but uh, had come together to force everyone into one man, one woman relationships by making all the gender non-conforming people transition. Um, and it was, it was, very yeah, this was horrible. That's a very specific <laughs> plot line. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. you know it's always the trans people that work with evangelicals and not the, like, yeah. radical lesbians or radical feminists, right? right? <laughs> and, and so, you know, I, I, I took a moment. I was really kind of busy and frustrated, but that stuck with me. And I wanted to say something about it. And especially because that filmmaker had, had like, been all about, like, her defense every time she got called on it was like, I'm starting a conversation. Like, hey, look, people are talking about it. I'm starting a conversation. Uh -huh. We're having a conversation. So that makes my film worth it. And, and I, I was like, okay, you know what? You know what? I want to continue your conversation with another film. And, <laughs> and so I, I did. It took me, like two years before I was able to start working on it and then it took me two years to finish making it and then I made The Gender Filator <laughs> and, and it is a, a um, sci-fi unofficial sequel um, musical porn parody and, uh, and it was a lot of fun but like it didn't I didn't actually get a chance to finish it and release it until 2011 and nobody knew about the gender cater i, I made a film parody of the film that nobody had heard of yeah, yeah. because yeah. because four years had gone by and right. sudden and the trans community has a memory of like four years so because so if true. you talk to, so to people in the the uh -huh. most active part of the trans community like people weren't around four years ago yeah. and and it was this wild surreal experience to hear that that like that like people were just like wait what what movie what? was what? that based on <laughs> I, I, I don't it was in a film festival and 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 it made me reflect on what it means to be in a community that has such a, a you know a variety of different factors a turnover rate a, a, um, you know different different ways of visibility and interacting with each other but um why do you think it is that um the younger girls and guys and g and c folk out there why do you think it is that when they come up out uh into their their selves and their transition why are they not uh, latching on to the elders the people that have been around for a little bit longer that know the ropes or you know or what is it about the elders uh, well, are they not wanting to be around the, the babies of our community. Like, what, what, what do you think the disconnect is? I'm curious yeah. to see your You know, it, it's, it's hard to say exactly, but I think that part of what's going on is that there is a huge amount of, of tension and difficulty that goes into transitioning. Yeah. And, and that is really intense. And, you know, once you are in that intensity, it's not that hard to then turn around and be like, hey, I can support you through your intensity. Right. Um, That's true. And, and after, but, but after you do that for like four or five years straight, um, it's, it's, it's really easy to kind of be like, you know, I'll, I'll support, but maybe more quietly or, right. or like, or, or different ways. So I see, I see a lot of trans people who've been out for like five or more years who will still be in community, 
but um, but not necessarily like going to the support groups to like right. off, offer their their help in the right. same way well, that maybe they used to. Right. Um, and this is, of course, generalizations. I know right. I know plenty of examples of people who do the are are the exact opposite way, but um, but like a numbers game, like it's there's not as many like trans folks who've been out for more than five years who are engaged in in the community support work right. in that way. Yeah, and shout out to the people in our lives, and I think I'm sure everyone in this car has at least one person that has gone through the transitions uh, of life, literal and figurative, <laughs> but, and still show up for other people, like, and still have the ability, like you said, I, I totally can understand what you're saying, like, yeah, the intensity, the conflict, the, 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 the joys uh, and the lows of transition, what you're through, and what you gotta get to a point of, like, you know, security and, like, you know, um, you know, home in your mind, yeah, who would want to do that again with anyone else, you know, so, but the people, there are people out there that do show up, like, yeah. time and time again, and shout out to those people, I have, uh, for me, uh, I have some great trans elders, uh, shout out to Van Barnes, one of my trans brothers, um, and St. Louis, she's uh, a good example of someone that shows up time and time again, um, for the community, um, Sayer, Sayer, if you're watching this, another person that shows up time and time again, um, as a trans elder, uh, also, but for me, probably the person that, uh, strangely enough, has been the most supportive, um, for me, that's, uh, part of my queer family, and who has actually been one of those people, um, that shows up time and time again through and helps people through transition is actually my ex-boyfriend, who is a cis gay man. Shout out Johnny. Johnny, if you're watching this. He has gone through like, uh, like five or six transitions. <laughs> but he's, you know, like, he shows up every time. And, um, yeah, I don't think I could have gone through, um, a lot of what I've gone through as a trans woman um, as easily if it wasn't for John and for someone who's like, okay, like this is not the first, this is not my first rodeo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, even though he's not a trans woman, this is not his first rodeo <laughs> walking through yeah. someone to, from transition from, you know, from a very, yeah. like, very early start. So yeah, shout out to those people. Those people are like, that's solidarity in my mind. And I think it's also important to recognize that, like, part of what's going on is that being out as trans can take a toll. Yeah. And, and that we've lost a lot of our elders, like, That's true. to That's HIV, true. to suicide, um, that, like, being, being out as trans for, for decades, a lot of folks have a lot that they're carrying. Yes. And yes. and that can make it harder to show up in different ways. Yes. And so we end up with this community which in in many ways is incredibly young and actually so so that moment where I, I put out that movie and like no one remembered what I was making the movie about. Um, let's see, I, I I I was what, like twenty seven? I was twenty seven and I had this realization that like I was an elder in my community. That like I was carrying the historical knowledge of our community that like no one else in in in, in my immediate circles was doing, right. and so it, 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 it's it's wild to be so young and yet be an elder and to try and like hold both of those pieces at the same time, recognizing like what it means to be an elder is often like. A role that you take on in a community and how you interact with people and the ways that we support each other um, and 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 age is, is a piece of it but even regardless from age like those roles need to be filled well and also I think there's there's a thing that happens when you're transitioning early on like it requires so much selfishness in those first few years in order to even survive right. and like that can give you blind spots to the folks that are elders around you and you'll you won't necessarily know that you're shutting them out but you right. do 
Right. Like, I did. Right. And I've had it happen to me as now a trans elder. And uh, repeatedly, or, you know, if you say the wrong thing because you're not hip to the language. So elders also, or elders, quote unquote, some of us just fade away because we don't feel welcome or wanted or loved. And, and I know that's an experience I have that another uh, dear heart who's hitting this past 20 now feels. And so it's, it's not, yeah, it's just, it's hard. It's hard on both ends right, right. to find, you know, a way to stick around and to really be involved. Right. That's why I like having these tours where I try to like, or this tour, but this tour, trying to like mix it up with different people from different positions and backgrounds. Uh, and backgrounds, like, because our history really matters. Yes. Our stories matter, and, and we're all on different timelines, but we're all time travelers too. Right, right, right. That's totally true. We're all time travelers. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I really believe in the time traveling element. We're like, it's it's weird how how you can coexist in four different places at once. Sometimes. Right. <laughs> I love that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we'll. Okay, I'm gonna let Toby take it. Well, okay, so, so this is a little bit of a non sequitur, but noticing a lull in the conversation. Speaking about time travel, um, <laughs> one of, one of my, my first and still, like, most published stories, at least, definitely most published, maybe, like, in one of the ways, most proudest stories, is about a time-traveling trans woman. Um, yeah? Yeah. So it's, 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 uh, it was published in uh, Best Lesbian Erotica 2010, and then it got republished in, um, in Take Me There, uh, Trans and Gender Queer Erotica, and then it got re-republished in Beyond the Binary. Um, and it is a story about a young trans woman who identifies as non-op, uh, who gets a visit from her time-traveling future self, who's post-op, and then they fuck. <laughs> oh! <laughs> so, wow, that's what's that's up. Amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, it, it's a fun story, and it's been out there. I've got it published several times now, so I actually put it out there for free. Um, so if you're watching this and you want to check it out, just, um, let's see, right now it's at my, my website, handbasketproductions.com. Um, should be linked from the front page, but it might also be like uh, handbasketproductions.com slash self-reflection. Awesome. <laughs> also, can I also bring the conversation yeah. back yeah. in time to when we had RVs in the car and it was amazing. <laughs> yeah. so and I just am glad that everyone in this car was on board for RVs because sometimes RVs is like a very divisive fast food choice for some fucking love uh, Arby's. We, and this is the Arby's car, y'all. This is the Arby's car. This is also car. the cat car. The cat, cat, cat folder. Oh, yeah. Cat yeah. folder. Check this out. Okay, also, Willa. Hey, Willa. Um, <laughs> uh, hey, Willa. Willa's the only person who has been tuning in this whole time. <laughs> Willa, yay! Yeah! Yes! We're so into it. Uh, thanks for being here with us. <laughs> And I wish that I could zoom in. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Cat folder. It's the, there's the cat folder. Okay. It's, it's too. Oh, I could uh, yeah. bring it up. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's look at the I cat. I want to zoom out. It's zoomed <laughs> in a lot. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Willa. We don't want to give you car sick. Cat folder. Look at that. What's up with it's that? It's a folder for all your cats. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> So I, yeah, uh, I want to ask uh, you two a question. Like, could you tell us a little bit? Like, since we've been on tour now for like a few days, really, in some mm -hmm. ways. Uh huh. Like, what has been your favorite moment so far? Oh, okay. My favorite moment was last night uh, getting to hear Kokoma sing oh, and so take us to 
heights unimaginable with her poem. That, mm. to me, was the best part of the tour up to this point. And close second was the Arby's bars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah, Arby's. What about you? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I think, I think it's, it's definitely, like, one of the things that's so awesome about doing a tour like this is, is more than the reading, more than the traveling, more than all of the work that, that we do to promote our own stuff all the time is, is getting to see each other's work and getting uh -huh. to, like, have work promoted to us because I know as much as I, like, create at all, all this stuff in this genre, I'm a huge fan. Like, I, I love finding, and sometimes it's hard to find um, really awesome work written by trans women. And so being in a space where suddenly, like, there's a whole bunch of us, and I'm going to all of these readings, and, you know, it's not just the, the performance, the, the job, the, the piece of me doing it, but like, oh, hey, I get to be in the audience and see yeah. a lot of this stuff. And so it's really incredible to, to see all... all um, all of what everyone else is doing. There's been a ton of powerful pieces. I definitely want to give out a, a shout out to what Tori read last yes. night, Tori. Um, which was just like, ugh. The car, oh, I, I just thought of another line, the yeah. cargo pant line from her piece. Like when she was like, when you let your child wear cargo pants, what did you expect to have? And of course they're going to become a transsexual. <laughs> we were talking, Tori, if you watch this, if you're watching or if you to watch this, we, uh, we had our little detour in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Yeah. Eau e Claire, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Uh, we fangirled over all the beautiful little gym lines in your piece that you read last night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think that there's, there's something that I really feel from all of Tori's writing that feels really like community insider. There's, there's pe yes. like line after line um, like scenario and situation that just like so feels not only like it resonates with with the experiences I've had in community but that it also it's like it's a story for us yep. right it's not it's not necessarily a story for all the other folks who will like then learn about our community it's a story for the folks who already know yeah um, so true. and 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 like that that it feels really powerful and really special to be able to have those kinds of things. So getting to see Tori, an excerpt from Tori's upcoming uh, novella was uh, really incredible and probably like it started the conversation about like being a, 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 a trans mom to other um, trans folks who are coming out and and really kind of sparked a lot of the conversation that we've been having about like different generations and trans elders and the way that we support each other in community so like that left a mark right like we we're still talking about it and thinking about all the different ways that these issues impact ourselves and our community um through this whole like three hour car ride <laughs> yeah it's been amazing the mm -hmm. car ride is also uh, a very special place yes. in my heart oh, so yeah. far. We've talked, we've had, like, we, we've had so many stories that we have shared with each other just in the two and a half hours we've been in this car. Like, enough stories for a show, really. Like, a, <laughs> like we can do a car show. You can do a whole show. We are. From the stories we told today. No, so. I mean, it's amazing what happens when trans women are sharing space with each other in close proximity. Yeah. And being real and honest and yes. feeling safe enough to really communicate what's going on. Yeah. Like, it's fucking magic. It is fucking magic. I I, I can't even, like, underemphasize, overemphasize how, oh, it's so good. I feel so grateful for everything. Thank you, everyone on the Kickstarter, by the way, out there. Thank you. This would not be happening without you. Um, oh, yeah. And right. our friends in Madison. Oh, here it is. Start Here's up. Look, look at it. Heart Get spark, y'all. Resilience. Get your copy. Get your copy. This is the Get anthology your... we finished. Let's look at some of that. Oh, yeah. Lighting. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Let's look at Speaking of which, Joss, may yes. I feel like reading a little bit from Ode? No. No. Oh. 
Oh, sure. Because I wasn't gonna read Ode on right. tour, just because I want people to I want people to read the book. You want like, an excerpt from it? Ah, uh, maybe tonight. Yeah, I can do an excerpt. I'm, I'm gonna read it. No, I'm gonna read it on the live. But I was like, I hadn't planned on really? reading it at yeah. yeah. I hadn't planned on reading it tonight or in Chicago. Right, but I I'll, figured that. But I'll I'll read it. Yeah, this is for the insider. Yeah, we still got it. We still got it. We still got Willa. We still Willa, got, we still got, Willa this is. <laughs> Dedicated to this, this is, yeah, this is amazing. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, so uh, background on this piece. This piece uh, I wrote um, actually after I went to New Orleans for uh, like three years ago. I had just, I was like very early on in transition um, and I had started uh, living full time. Yeah, but pre-hormones, and uh, I went to New Orleans. I had a blast with some of my amazing babies, uh, Charlie Calvin and Josh Brophy, if y'all watching. Love y'all. So this is inspired by that trip, um, and it's called Ode. Our humanity is a burden on the soft strains of death. What time's the funeral? I sit here handcuffed and led through halls peeling with pale yellow paint. Welcome to the present awful sum of oppression. Hear the familiar voice of violence rising. Feel the strength of our outrage. Caress it as if it were your own life you had to battle for in blood. The years of unfulfilled longing echo in rings carved in flesh and bone. It speaks through the voice of little girls begging for beauty. We won't be nice. We will scream and holler and break shit until our sisters are free and safe from the gaze of men who would rather kill us than share us with the world. We hear civilized languages debase our humanity. We watch the cultural exorcisms of transgender women on the streets of New York and New Orleans. We see ourselves disappearing behind the white swinging door of equality. I stopped believing in God the day I heard my Sunday school teacher justify why the Israelites had to commit genocide against the children of Canaan. And I stopped believing in American democracy the morning I saw the body of Michael Brown beneath an August sky. Did a surge of love and compassion sweep through his veins as he bled out on warm asphalt? Did he moan something awful as he thought of how sons wear on a mother, like the scars on her skin from sunburns or the cheap hair dyes she buys from the drugstore down the street to color away the gray and the grief from her brittle roots? Or was, it, was all this replaced by a swift, seething anger as his soul seeped into the earth to possess and haunt it with the rotting stench of white loathing? Welcome to the dark phases of womanhood, of never having been a girl, of never having the world lift you up in thin glory, of never feeling the protection of daddy's arms or mama's blush. I'm in St. Louis the morning I hear that Penny Proud was murdered. Less than 48 hours earlier, I was walking through the French Quarter in black patent leather pumps, drunk on vodka and beer. I'm wearing a tan abstract rainbow print dress that reminds me of Technicolor wood grain. We eat brunch and I spend too much money at an overpriced hipster cafe on blue crab hash to pretend I'm not a poor queer. I swallow clear distilled grain spiked with tonic water and cranberry juice on upstairs outdoor patios with drunk faggots on a Sunday afternoon. I tip a few dollars to a transgender drag queen with tan tits and a mod spandex bodysuit and pumped lips. We revel in ignorance and bliss down Bourbon Street as I stop every few hours to retuck my dick and balls into my ass. Two nights before, as we sat in a taxi drifting us down the disheveled streets toward the Phoenix, the driver tells me the girls gather near a lonely green lit bar on the corner that they can pick up a date here if they need to make some cash and that I can find myself a man in need of a peculiar type of woman. 
I'm wearing a black spaghetti strap dress with a blue and black leopard print shawl. My lips are dark red and my legs are wrapped in black backseam pantyhose to match my black lacquer stilettos. We continue to the leather bar and on the second floor where the lights are off and the men play in secluded cubbies, a man asks if he can buy the pretty lady a drink. Did he just call you a lady? Insane laughter. Yes, he did. He must be fucking blind because you ain't no damn lady. <laughs> Fuck you, whore. I take the glass dripping with vodka and soda from the shirtless middle-aged cub and smile as I walk toward the white man at the end of the bar. He looks like a textbook illustration of a 40-year-old computer programmer with wire glasses, tan cargo pants, and a plain t-shirt. He asks me where I live. I tell him, St. Louis. We chat about Ferguson and Michael Brown and the police state residing in my hometown. He rubs his hands on my thighs and my ass. I smile and drink another cocktail. The second floor bar is dark and the bartender tells me I can't leave the bar. I'm sorry, darling, but the dark rooms are for men only. The next day brings a cream sundress, new pumps, and a brown and blue reptile headband. We walk around the French Quarter and meet up with an old college friend. He sits at a quarter queer bar in a turquoise Lacoste polo sipping a beer. We embrace in hugs as I introduce him to my friends from St. Louis. The night becomes a dark blur as we stroll from bar to bar sucking liquor from straws and I tell my old peer my desire to become a woman. He sounds honest in his support of my identity and in my drunken haze I latch onto his understanding and plead for him to fuck my pussy. Sometime during this blackout, Penny was brushing her hair. She might have been painting her nails. She could have been on the same street laughing or singing or dancing as gold rays burned down the aisles of Cajun streets. I may, may have seen her. I may have seen the shadow of her ass behind a graffiti corner as I tried to balance vodka-soaked knees on black heels. I may have heard her scream into the night as I kissed the lips of bourbon-burned gay boys. I may have summoned her as I speak these words into the silent air of a cold night. I need to feel abandoned. I need to feel loved. I need to feel lost. Please fuck me, daddy. Fill my ass with your cum. Forget me and breed me. Give me a reason to keep the poison inside my eyes as the world tries to erase me. My breasts swell with the pain of human existence and I come like the pouring rain each time you call my name. Tell me you can't stop yourself from loving me. Tear me up. That's his move. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so good. Thank you. No, thank you for publishing it. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, well, I think we're going to wrap up. Um, we're, we're, almost to, we're almost to Madison. We're like, almost, so close. 45 minutes, right? Like, uh, Yeah, I think we are. No, not, no, less than that. Less than 45. We're like, uh, uh, one, two, 35 minutes from Madison. So uh -huh. we'll see y'all soon. Bye. Bye, Willa. Bye, Willa. <laughs>